the brand new DJI Mavic Air 2 drone and we're about to go out for our first uh, test flight today. We just received it this morning at 10.20 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, it was delivered by FedEx. Um, no signature required. We had a um, contactless delivery, but uh, we've charged all three batteries up the way Lauren Donner said that uh, we charged them, you know, just with the um, plugging the, uh, you know, the cord directly into the battery and not using the hub, the charging hub at all. And forget, he called it a different name in Canada, but uh, we didn't use the hub. We got all three batteries charged. Uh, we fired up the drone. We did the firmware update for the app, the the uh, the dat the fly the fly safe base, whatever they call that thing, fly base. Uh, we updated that. Uh, we um, did a um, IMU calibration. We calibrated the gimbal. And now we're out the field. We're going to calibrate the uh, compass before we take off. So um, you know we got some wind out here. I will put it up on that uh, you know the app. Uh, uh, the shows that the wind uh, and the flying conditions I think it's uh, gusting up to 18 miles per hour here's hours so they say this thing's good in the wind so it will get the wind 10 wind test on the first flight out sorry I hope you can hear me the wind's not too bad back here by the bulkhead and uh, uh, another uh, another thing here is they say what, what's the other thing uh, I like the fact that on the controller you know, your phone fits comfortably in here with its case on. Now, I have a thin case. I don't have like an otter box or anything, but I have a thin rubber bumper case. And normally I have to take it off because it, if you put it in a lot of controllers, it kind of seems like it wants to squeeze out. And the old Mavic uh, things, it wouldn't fit in the little, um, in those grippers below uh, properly. But this does. Fits in real secure. I have no doubt that it's in there so that that's a good thing so we will uh, calibrate the compass and uh, we're gonna go for a flight so I uh, will be right back I'm gonna do the compass calibration off camera because you guys have seen a million compass calibrations you don't need to see it up all right we got the uh, the compass calibrated the drones out there on the landing pad um, We've, so we did all the other calibrations back at the house. Um, we're going to kind of leave everything in auto here, Dr. Auto settings uh, today. I didn't put any of the ND filter on. The ND filters on. I did want to mess around and not be able to get it back on again. But uh, next flight we'll get some ND filters on there and test them out. I saw that the usual thing you got a 16, like a uh, 64, and a 256. So that's uh, that's crazy. I guess they 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 think you're going to do a lot of uh, you know uh, <laughs> you know waterfalls or something like that. You know where you really need the uh, you know the the catcher. You know uh, uh, to slow down a lot of frames. But uh, anyways, uh, I, I thought that was unusual. But um, so I'm, I'll probably mostly be using like the 16. But uh, it's it's good that you got that heavy duty one. So uh, okay, with no further ado, uh, we'll take off. I said I'm going to start out with kind of Doctor Auto. Um, Stats, we're not doing any fancy on this first flight here. We're just going to kind of get familiar with the drone, see how it flies, see how the, the controller is, the sticks and so on. We're not going to do any range testing or anything like that. It's just going to be kind of basic functions, see how the camera is, see, see what the pictures look like. I did throw on a JPEG, JPEG Plus RAW. Uh, so, um, you know, we'll take a look at the different ones at. And we'll probably go uh, try a little 4K60, you know, maybe we'll try some... 4K 30 HDR and uh, you know a couple of day basic camera things. So with no further ado, let's take this drone off here. So uh, I'm gonna step to the side here, so you can see the see the little mini. See how see how it hovers. So uh, we got uh, let's see here 17 satellites. Um, we're in a safe landing thing here. 100% battery uh, on the uh, drone. I don't know if the controller tells you. So uh, we got on normal, you know, normal flight mode here, and we're gonna use the uh, automatic uh, takeoff button. Let's see, normal. Oops. I don't want to do that. Uh, okay, there we go. Oh, nothing happened. So um, you know, you have the, uh, the 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 button here to take off, preparing to take off. Hmm. Turn the home altitude. Let's put that a little higher up. Okay, there we go. Max altitude. 
Okay, we, we rebooted the drone and the controller and everything. Uh, I don't know why it was letting me take off before, but it says take off bit it now. So we will hit that little button here, the automatic takeoff. And then you hit that big button. And there it goes. Let's see how the hover is. Because you got a stiff wind coming through here. So I think at least 18 miles per hour. So uh, you can see it, uh, you know, holding pretty steady over the pad here. You can hear the beeping because of the obstacle avoidance uh, sensors. We're too close probably to this uh, bulkhead back here. So uh, let's take it to, uh, let's start recording. Oops, I mean, I was in a picture mode. So uh, let's, uh, let's just take it off in case somebody comes along. Oh, well, that thing goes up fast. Okay, so we're gonna put her over the dunes. Okay, now we're gonna go to, um, first of all, I'm gonna do a screen recording. Let's, let's go get, let's do a screen recording here. Let's see here. Okay, so, let's see here. Uh, let's see, screen recording. Okay, so we're screen recording now. And we're gonna go back into the, the Fly app here. Where'd the Fly app go? Okay, now we're gonna change to uh, video. We'll change the video first. We'll take some pictures eventually. So we're going to start off with um, 4K60. Why not, right? Everybody loves 4K60. I don't know why, but they do. So uh, we're going to start off in 4K60. So we're recording now. And let's see here. Let's, uh, let's set our EV here. Uh, let's see. Let's make it a little... Make it a little darker. It's kind of bright out here. It's too dark. Okay, negative three. It's probably probably good. Okay, let's uh, let's go up and out here. So uh, you're you're watching the screen recording now. So we're gonna we're gonna shut this off. All right, I had the uh, Mavic Air two out over uh, three thousand feet, and I did the return home to see how accurate it was. Um, I I, screen, I tried to screen record this whole flight, but I don't know why I missed like the first uh, you know. Uh, half of it but uh or why i don't have it but uh so anyhow we'll return to um you know home here it's coming home quick 22 miles per hour and we're at auto settings the and the evs uh even we, we don't have the ev locked here unfortunately we should have locked it but the histogram's looking pretty good here the sky's just this just a tab blown out over on the uh right hand side where the sun is but but not bad at all so now we're really close we're only like 20 feet above us and it's uh, starting to come down so we're going to switch to the gopro hero view to watch it come all the way to the ground all right i've uh i went over 3,000 feet away from me and i activated um the return home mode so let's see if uh she lands uh on the pad Look at her adjusting. It's, good. it's trying to adjust. Oh, it says unsafe area to land. It wants me to land. I considered this an unsafe landing area and, and one land uh, all I could think of is um, you know maybe I was too close to that fence in the front and the sea wall to the back maybe it needs even more wide open space than, than that but uh, you know it uh, just an unsuitable landing spot and uh, you know it just wouldn't land and that wanted me to take over and land which uh, uh, is kind of the perfect thing to do I think if it doubts its landing spot just let the uh, pilot take over and get a good landing so um more than uh happy with uh you know uh that reaction by the uh the drone and the controller i still have uh 40 looks like 44 minutes left on this battery i i didn't time i never time these things but I, i've been flying for a while so uh we will go back up again here so let's uh 
Let's try uh, other ways of uh, landing. So let's go uh, down and out with the sticks. Okay, that fires the motors up. So now we just kind of push the stick up. So that's another way of taking off beside the, the Dr. Auto button. All right, let's go out for another little flight here. All right, we're taking off again here after our uh, return home test, which didn't work out as well as we hoped to. I think we were too confined of a uh, area here, but we're going to take it out again. We still got plenty of uh, battery life left here. So okay, we're in the auto settings here. Um, I should have locked the auto exposure in here, but uh, we're, we're mostly just uh, kind of flying around testing the drone here. Uh, we'll do a a full uh, video test here in the uh, probably the next video coming out. So uh, man, we're just down here at the beach. Um, you know, we're up uh, you know 500 feet now. I mean, out 500 feet, up about 150 feet. Uh, you can see the uh, I got the. Uh, you know, the blinkies on there that show the overexposure on the white caps of the waves. Uh, you know, that's, that's kind of funny that uh, they were overexposed. So I should have, you know, t taken the EV down here. As you can see, the histograms kind of, uh, you know, uh, got that real high point there to the, um, you know, to the right there. Now it's kind of bouncing out a little bit better now. Um, and we're raising the uh, gimbal up a little bit as that bar on the right shows you. Unable to switch camera modes and current uh, current shooting mode. So I, I'm not exactly sure what I had locked in at this point. Um, uh, I, I may have been in uh, maybe HDR mode. Uh, again, I, I'm not even sure what I was in. I was trying all the modes out, but the problem with that is, you know, you never know what mode you're in. Look, looking back at the video now, because uh, as far as I could tell, I, I don't know any way to look at the file and determine what setting I had on whether I was in, uh, you know, normal, HDR mode, um, I don't know whether mo other modes there are, but you know, like 4K, 64K, 30, uh, 1080p, that type of thing. So we're just, you know, kind of gliding along the beach here with a little bit of ocean in the bottom part of the frame. And it looks, I don't see the blinky, so it looks like it's uh, probably exposed at, at this point here. So, um, Again, we're up, uh, we're up just a little over 100 feet, 118, which is usually, you know, pretty good height for capturing stuff on the beach here. And um, histograms looking good, so we're kind of coming back to us a little bit here. You know, coming back from the ocean across the beach, about to hit the dunes. So it was uh, the light. Light was good this day. You know, we had uh, some light clouds. Um, you know, we had a good amount of light still at this point in the day. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty close to home now. Um, I'm going to run down the beach here. So this thing, it handled beautifully. It flew, I mean, it almost flew just like the Mavic 2 series. Uh, I mean, it fought the, it fought the wind well. Um, you know, it's uh, very precise on the sticks. I mean, as far as I know, you can't dial in your uh, stick settings like you can with the Mavic 2 series. So you just have the default six, stick settings here for the, the modes we're familiar with, the tripod, the, the uh, P mode, and the sport mode. So here I'm gonna switch things up a little bit. I'm getting ready to take a uh, auto exposure bracket of three shots here. Um, so switching over to the photo mode here. So I tried out a lot of photos here, but I made the same mistake here. I shot, you know, some singles, some 48 megapixels, some smart photos some auto exposure bracket, and then while I was looking all, I couldn't figure out what was what as far as the uh, post-processing, but, um, so, uh, I'm gonna try and see if you can, if there's a way you can tell by looking at the files, or from the next testing, I'll just shoot all one type of picture, so I know, you know, what, what what's up here, but, uh, so, it, it's time to, um, you know, start, start the last thing, you see the overexposure thing on top of the roofs there, um, but uh, but anyhow, again, they flew great today. This first flight, I had no issues whatsoever. I mean, just just precise flyer, all the speed you need, all, all the wind fighting you need. Um, so um, yeah, this this one's a winner. I'm going to declare it a winner already. So thanks for watching, folks, and uh, to hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Okay, look, can you did you hear how quiet this thing is? Uh, you know, in the last uh, landing.
and you hope I you could see it. But very quiet. Especially compared to the first uh, Mavic Air. Um, I'd say the wind's even like throwing us all around and still very quiet. So let's, uh, let's land is now. We're down to uh, 25%. I guess. This is the auto landing, of course. She lands great. She's an easy auto lander. So, um, that's uh, the first battery on the, uh, you know, the Mavic uh, Air 2. We ran it down to 24% battery, so we're going to stop now and maybe go to a second location to find another battery. So, uh, just don't go anywhere. <laughs> 